Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem subsets. So we are given an integer array nums and all we need to do is return every single possible subset that we could create from the input nums. And we do not want to include any duplicate subsets. So what is a subset? Well, let's say we have one, two, three as our input. One subset, of course, would be one, right, by itself. Another subset would be two by itself. We could do one, two together. Now, what happens if we do two, one, right? We just swap the order. Does that count as a different subset or is that the same as this subset? Well, they're the exact same. We don't care about the order. This is not a permutation. This is a subset. So it's not a permutation. It's a subset. So we do not want to include duplicates and this counts as a duplicate. We're not gonna include it. And three is another subset, one, three, two, three, one, two, three. The original input is technically also a subset. And we also don't wanna forget the empty subset. So no matter what we're given, an empty subset is technically a subset of this as well. So if we wanna create all the subsets from this input, we have a choice for every single element. So for this one, we have a choice of include the one in our subset or not include the one so we get an empty subset, right? So we have that choice and we have that choice for every single input element. So in total, we have two choices here, two choices here and two choices here. So this is gonna be eight or in other words, two to the power of N where N is the size of our input. Right, so this is the number of subsets and we don't want the number of sub subsets, we actually want the subsets themselves. So how long could a subset be, right? Well, we could have a subset one, two, three, right? The size of our input. We could also have subsets that are smaller, right? Like one, two, maybe two, three. So. As you can tell, this is not gonna be an efficient problem to solve. We have this many subsets and each subset could be up to length n. So the worst case time complexity of this problem is gonna be n times two to the n regardless of how efficient we make it. Because given the constraints of this problem, we don't want the number of subsets, we want the subsets themselves, we have to make it inefficient. So with this in mind, we can just jump straight into backtracking, which is the brute force way of solving this problem, but it's also pretty much the most efficient way. So like I said, for each of these elements, we have a choice. So I'm going to draw the decision tree. So first we can choose to add one or not add one. And that will give us two subsets, one subset with just one and one empty subset. So along this path, we can decide now, do we want to add to or not add to? So with one decision, we will add to, and the other decision, we won't add to. So we'll get one, two as one subset, and the other subset will just be one by itself. And we can actually repeat that on the right subtree for two. So we can decide to add two to this empty subset, or we can decide to not add two to the empty subset in which case we'll get a subset with two by itself or we'll get the empty subset again, right? This is where we're just not adding anything. And lastly, we can decide whether we wanna add this three or not. So if we add the three to this subset, we'll get one, two, three. If we don't add the three, then we will remain as one, two. And we can repeat that decision over here. And that's basically what I'm gonna do now, right? Repeat that decision for every single one of our, like you can call them nodes or you can call them leaf nodes. That's just what we're doing. So if I add the three here, we'll have a one, three. If I do not add the three here, we'll have the one by itself. So you can kind of see these are four unique subsets, right? Now let's build the rest of the four from over here. So I have the choice, do I add three? or do I not add three to this subset? If I do, I will get two, three. If I don't, I will have two by itself. And you can see these two subsets are different from the subsets over here. These are still unique. And lastly, we can choose to add three to the 
subs to the empty subset or we can choose not to add three to the empty subset in which case we'll get a single empty subset now you can see we keep multiplying by two right so here we had a one we had one we we multiply by two now we have two subsets over here right we go down again we multiply by two now we have four subsets over here right then we go down one more time multiply by two we have eight subsets and they're all unique this is our result this is what we're building with this problem this is backtracking now if you want to know how to do this backtracking solution in code let me show you right now so let's do this with backtracking. So we're going to have a result list, which we're going to add these subsets to. And I'm going to do this with uh, backtracking depth first search. And I'm going to write this function inside of this function so that we don't have to pass in this variable or this variable into it. We'll just have access to it by default. But I'm going to pass in i, which is the index of the value that we are making the decision on. So, you know, we had one, two, three. So initially, I'm going to pass in index zero for this one. And you know, this will be index one, this will be index two. That's gonna tell us whether we decide to add three or not add three. So this I will tell us which element we're currently visiting. And so we know that the base case for this will be if I happens to be out of bounds. So if it's greater than or equal to the length of our input, we know we're out of bounds. And in that case, we can just return. Now, what, uh, what like data structure am I gonna use to build each subset? I'm going to have an array and I'm gonna allocate it outside of the function so that we have global access to it inside of uh, this function, right? So let's say cur, let's actually call it subset. Let's say that it has the uh, subset that we currently have. If we ever reach the base case, we know we've gotten past our leaf node. So what we can do is add that to our result and I'm also going to add a copy of the subset because it because the way it works in Python and in most most languages, this subset is going to be modified, right? So we know we have two decisions. So this is the decision to include nums of i. So this is like our left decision that I showed you in the picture, right? So what I'm going to do is to the subset, I'm going to append nums of i. And then I'm going to recursively run depth first search on the next element. So I plus one. So this is going to be like the left branch of our decision tree. And this is going to be the decision not to include nums of I. So basically we're skipping nums of I. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to take the subset and just pop the element that we just uh, appended. And then I'm going to recursively run depth first search. Uh, I'm basically going to do the same thing. So these two function calls, while they look the exact same, they're going to behave slightly differently because for this recursive call, it's going to have a different subset given to it. And this recursive call is going to have an empty subset given to it. So now the only thing left for us to do is call our function. Of course, we're gonna pass an index zero, that's the first value, and then we can return our result. So as you can see, it is an efficient solution. Luckily for us, the order that we have our subsets in the result doesn't matter. So for example, if we had an empty subset and we had one, that's the same as if we returned one and the empty subset, right? Like the order that we put the subsets in doesn't actually matter. But again, I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.